Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we had a request to go over uh, surface fillets or fillets. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. It's under Edit Nerbs. Well, first you're in the Surfaces menu here. Edit Nerbs, Surface Fillet. I'm just going to call it a fillet. I don't know. It might be a fillet. But anyway, then you have Circular Fillet, Freeform Fillet, or Fillet. Filet blend tool. I'm going to say filet. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to go over all these in individual tutorials. First one we're going to talk about is the circular filet. For better, uh, if you know how this is better pronounced and I'm pronouncing it wrong, please let me know. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so a circular filet. And this is a NURBS surface command. So first to demonstrate this, let's go to create NURBS primitives sphere. I'll just make a quick sphere here. Hit the 5 key for shaded view. And I'll just kind of make it like a tall skinny sphere. And I'll duplicate it by hitting Control D. I'll rotate this one like 90 degrees. And I'll make this one not quite as thick. A little bit skinnier. And I'll hide the grid. So we have this. So the way NURBS are made, the way a NURBS surface is constructed, you can't really have a branching shape. Like in polygons, I can model a shape that looks like this and have it be one flowing shape with a nice uh, flow of geometry and my edge loops will be nice and clean. But in NURBS, the way NURBS are created with, with curves, you can't really do that. A curve has to kind of flow and not break into this other shape, at least not very cleanly. So what a fillet or fillet does is it kind of creates a blend surface between two NURBS objects to blend the two together but with using a third surface to do it. So it's not really one flowing surface but it creates the illusion of one flowing surface. So if we select both of these objects, go to edit NURBS, surface fillet, circular fillet, you see this new object kind of looks like suspenders or something on a guy. Anyway, uh, it creates this new object that kind of flows the surface between the two like this. You see when I deselect it, we get this nice flowing look to this NURBS object to this NURBS object. But you'll see they're still separated and this object here, these two objects uh, around the uh, arms, if you will, are separate. But it creates that illusion so that when we render this in a scene, we get that illusion of it being a modeled surface altogether. And that's because of the way NURBS works, you have to do this kind of stuff. And that's the general basics of it. Let's go into the options and you can kind of see how this is done. Let's go to Edit NURBS, Surface Fillet, Fillet, whatever, Circular Fillet, Options. And we have several options here. And my apologies if you hear my kids uh, playing in the background. <laughs> so I'm going to edit reset settings. We already have our reset settings already. So we have three check boxes here. We have create curve on surface. Then we have reverse primary surface normal, reverse secondary surface normal. And all three of these are unchecked by default. And then we have a radius slider. And below that we have a use tolerance. And we have global and local positional and tangent tolerance. First let's talk about global and local. If you, When you have local selected, which we do by default, it's cr you're, you're using settings that you set here in this box, this, this uh, options box, and it uses those settings. If we click global, you'll see those settings go away, and it's using a global setting that is set within Maya's preferences in the background. If we go to window, settings, preferences, preferences, and if we look for settings here, you'll see we have at the bottom tolerance, positional and tangential, just like we do over here when local is selected. But when you have global selected, you'll use these settings that are set within Maya's preferences. And you can adjust these here if you want. And then when you, you use local, you'll use settings that are set here, and the global settings will be overridden. Okay? And we'll get into what these settings do in a minute. So since we already have a fillet created, let's go into the channel box. Let's select one of these and click over here under the inputs and you see we have 
primary radius, secondary radius, and then we have position and tangent tolerance. So these are our two tolerance sliders. And because whenever we created this fillet, we use a local uh, use tolerance setting, these two uh, channel box entries will have effect on the object. If we had used global, these two options may still be there in the channel box simply because they are programmed that way, but they might not have any effect because we have, we're using the global uh, tolerance settings. If we hit control A for the attribute editor and look under here, you can see again we have primary radius, secondary radius, position tolerance, tangent tolerance, those same settings here. So there's a couple ways to get to these uh, different uh, settings. However, if you wanted to use the global uh, tolerance uh, settings, I believe you have to remake the object. I could be wrong about that. Um, I haven't found somewhere in the uh, channel box where you can flip that uh, between the two. But in any case, you can also see here we have primary surface and secondary surface, and you can kind of plug in different surfaces. So right now the primary surface is NURB Sphere 1, which is this one, I believe. Control A, yeah, NURB Sphere 1. This is NURB Sphere 2. If we rename those things, it will be probably a little bit more helpful names in the channel box. But the primary surface is this vertical one. The secondary one is the horizontal one. So whenever it looks at the primary radius versus the secondary radius, that's what it's referring to, those two shapes. So let's go ahead and adjust these uh, radius sliders and kind of see what happens. So the primary radius is at 1. If we lower this, you can see how the shape changes. And let's go to shaded, wireframe on shaded, so maybe you can see it a little better. And it's kind of subtle, but you can kind of see how it's moving. And what's happening is it's trying to enlarge in this circular uh, shape. So it gets a little bit bigger. And it's primary focus on the primary radius, which is the, sur the side of the fillet that's closest to the primary surface, the primary radius. Then you have secondary radius, which is similar. So you kind of kind of you see you have to kind of adjust these shapes to get the look you want to. And most of the time I keep them at one because that tends to be the cleanest result. One thing to point out, if you look at this side, this fillet over here, it's one surface like this. And if you look at this one, it's broken into two. And the reason why that is, is because of the surface seam. With wireframe on shaded mode visible right now, you can see that there's a darker line right here on this sphere. You see this line here, this isoparm, is darker than the rest. That's because that is the seam of this sphere. If you look at this sphere, the darker line on it is at the bottom of this sphere. So because the seam for this one is here and the seam for this one is at the bottom, it divides this object. So there's a seam on the bottom and the top matching the seams of the spheres that they are uh, connected to. And while this one has a seam on the bottom here, because there is no seam connected to this fillet on this side, it remains one big piece. So one way we could fix that is by moving the seam of this sphere to be in the front and not dividing either fillet. If I rotate my sphere, because of history, my fillet will stay in place. And now since my seam for this sphere is in front, when I select my fillet now, you see it's one surface on both sides. It's not cut in half anymore. So the surface uh, seam is important for whenever you're creating these fillets on how they also create their own seams. And if you need to move a seam and you can't just rotate the object because you have a bit more complex shape, you can right click your object, choose isoparm, select a different isoparm and tell it to move the seam here by going to edit nerves, move seam like this. But we won't worry about that right now. Let's go back to our options here. And then we have our position and tangent tolerance. And again, these are kind of based on preference and what kind of look you're going for. You can adjust these sliders and see what kind of result you get. And it could be very subtle. It might not have any result at all. There we go. There we go. We're getting something. 
So as we get to low numbers, you see my divisions in my fillet increase for my position tolerance. And then we have tangent tolerance. We adjust this slider some. Not really seeing much difference. And you might have varying uh, effects based on the complexity of your shapes. I'm just using a couple simple spheres here, so it might not really be uh, changing much. But definitely the position tolerance does add more uh, isoparms to the shape as it gets to a low number. But anyway, so those four sliders, that's kind of what they do. They affect this shape in very subtle ways. And that's generally the, the way this works. Let's go back to the option box and look at some of these other things here. We have create curve on surface, reverse primary surface normal, reverse secondary surface normal. So we're going to go ahead and just use these same spheres. I'll delete the fillet I've already made. Select these objects again. And now I'll turn these check one of these set boxes on. Create curve on surface and hit apply. There we go. I had to switch it to local mode. I had forgotten I had switched to global. And that seemed to make it go a lot faster. So what happened here now, if you look at our sphere, let me hide this. I'm actually going to select these two objects and control H to hide them. You see now on our sphere I have these curves that have been created where those where the other uh, sphere had intersected. So it creates this curve on the surface. And this curve can be changed and manipulated. Uh, but it won't affect and it won't affect the uh, fillet. But it's there as a kind of a help if you needed to make another shape based on where this fillet currently is. Having a curve there can help you to use that as something to make something else with that will fit this fillet shape as opposed to somehow trying to finagle some other way of creating uh, something to, inter to somehow interact with this fillet. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, yeah this one has curves as well. They have been created. So that just creates curves on the surface where these fillets are. Let's go back to our options now. Let me undo all that. And now I have reverse surface normal for primary or secondary. Or you can do both. Just reverse for the primary. You hit apply. So you'll see what happened if we hide the two spheres. The fillet was kind of created inside the objects instead of the other way around. Let me undo that and let's go, let's uncheck that one and reverse secondary surface normal and hit apply. And then we get this kind of result. And if we reverse both of them at the same time, hit apply, we get this result. So checking these boxes, you kind of will get different results. And most of the time, I'd say, most of the time, people are looking for the typical blend between the two like this. If I turn off uh, wireframe unshaded like that. That's what you're looking for most of the time. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.